Well, last time I was sitting here, things were looking pretty peachy for Forest. And now look at us. Hello, 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 my name is Max Goodwin and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about how this season's kind of going for Nottingham Forest. A little bit of a backstory on the managerial situation and actually how well our new manager, Super Stevie Cooper, is doing at the club at the moment, given the depleted resources that we have access to. I'm not much of an authority on this kind of stuff. I'm obviously not a coach, a football coach. I'm not a pundit or a journalist or anything like that. And I don't claim to be. This is just from a uh, an unbiased point of view, as a you know, as a as unbiased as a Forest fan can be, where I can sort of give you my personal opinion on how the season's going, and also a little bit of informed uh, discussion on how we're actually playing, considering uh, the situation around us at the moment. So I've got here my little script, I've got myself a drink, and I hope you are ready for the next hopefully 15-20 minutes of football content. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please don't forget to like button down below and subscribe whilst you're down there. It'd be greatly appreciated. We're getting very close to 150 subscribers. And if you enjoy this sort of thing, let me know. And I'll definitely get on to doing a few more of these sort of sit-down discussion style videos in the future. Part one: What happened to Chris Hewan? In 2019-2020, under Sabri Lamucci, Nottingham Forest finished 7th in the Championship, finishing pretty drastically following the Covid lockdown, ending the season 7th, like I say, with one goal difference between ourselves and, ironically, Steve Cooper's Swansea City in the playoffs, which unfortunately we bottled on the final day of the season. This would then be followed by a really poor start to the subsequent season, seeing Sabri Lamucci sacked and replaced by experienced manager Chris Hewton. Hewton is pretty widely regarded as a championship specialist, having been promoted with Newcastle and Brighton pretty easily in the past, and probably his most impressive performance being an 11th place finish in the Premier League with Norwich City in 2012. And Hewton was pretty much able to come in and stable the ship as soon as he got the job, finishing 17th in his only full season in charge of the club. Well, I say full season, pretty much a full season, seeing as how quickly we got rid of Lamucci, conceding 45 goals in the league, which is actually the fifth best in the league, and ironically, five goals less than we conceded in that seventh place finish the season before. However, Hewton's predication for defence first football turned Forest into a very, very boring team. Trust me. And eventually, we finished 17th and pretty rigidly used that 4 2 3 1 system that he's pretty much become famous for using. But it just wasn't really working. Something wasn't quite there. In fairness, luck could definitely be argued as being a reason as to why it didn't really work with Chris Hewton, with Lewis Grabin and Lyle Taylor, our main two strikers, combining for just 10 goals in the league last season. This considering that they should have really unexpected goals accumulated close to 20 between them. However, eventually something would have to give, and eventually Hewton would be dismissed in September of 2021. In fairness, Hewton may feel like he was potentially hard done by by the club, considering the financial situation we are under at the moment and with the majority of our signings last season not really being the type of player he would have gone for and that lack of joint up thinking between himself and club CEO Dane Murphy. However, in the end a change needed to happen and to be honest with the talent at his disposal likes of Brennan Johnson, Lewis Graben, Max Lowe, Jed Spence as we'll get into in a little bit, he should really have done better with the core level of talent at the club at the time. Part 2. Who the f*** is Steve Cooper? Five days following the sacking of Chris Hewton, Forrest would appoint a pretty ballsy manager in the form of Steve Cooper. Now, of course, he will be best known for his back-to-back -back finishes in the playoffs with Swansea City. But actually, his history of coaching is very important, and we're going to dive into it a little bit in this video. Following a pretty average footballing career, predominantly playing in the Welsh Premier League, Steve Cooper will become one of the youngest people to attain a UEFA Pro licence at the age of just 27, where at hometown club Wrexham, he would become firstly a youth coach and then the head of youth development at the Welsh side. He would then eventually join Liverpool, where he would be again an academy youth coach, and would then eventually join the England youth setups. During his time with Liverpool and the youth setups with England, he had the chance to nurture the careers of talents such as Raheem Sterling, Trent Alexander Arnold, Jaden Sancho, Callum Hudson Odoi, and Phil Foden. Quite the CV of players you've got into world class potential. And like I say, his work at Liverpool did not go unrewarded, joining the England under 17s ranks as a youth coach, where at the helm, England would finish in the final of the Under-17 European Championship before dominating that very famous Under-17 
2017 World Cup with a team consisting of the likes of Callum Hudson-Odoi, Phil Foden and Jadon Sancho, players who've reached Premier League potential and are now full England international, setting the pathway to some of England's future greats. And during the time he didn't have with his players, he became the head of the youth development curriculum, setting in place the current development and curriculum being used by the under 15s at England level, meaning he is responsible for the construction of the current England DNA at the moment being instilled this possession based high pressing high intensity football that england have tried to instill through all levels of development in youth teams and of course we know the rest of the story he would succeed graham potter as he was on his way out to brighton at swansea city delivering back-to-back -back playoff finishes including a fourth place finish last season reaching the playoff final where unfortunately they lost to brentford 2-0 at wembley all in all a very successful start to a burgeoning career for the 41 year old part three the setup Steve Cooper has admitted himself that he wants his teams to be playing possession-based, forward-thinking and quick football. And he showed that during his time in charge of Swansea, really his first proper club management role, in which his team could both play possession-based and high-intensity vertical football at the same time, or sort of a combination of both, or neither. They could also play defensive counter-attacking football when needed. This pragmatism was founded on a very solid defence, historically in his time in charge of Swansea. Now defence was probably the strongest area for Forrest last season, conceding just 45 times less than one goal per game. However, it could be argued that Cooper's Swansea team were actually better defensively than Forrest, conceding just 39 times, 0.87 goals against per 90, and were more organised in their defensive shape, conceding just over 11 shots per 90, 11th in the league, while each shot being worth about 0.1 expected goals, which was second in the league, suggesting that whilst they were conceding a lot of shots, they were limiting their opponents to quite inferior quality shots compared to the ones they were taking. This stability allowed the midfield and attack to thrive, scoring 120 goals in two seasons, fifth most in the league during this period, and the second most passes into the final third, and would dominate games when required, averaging a possession tilt of about 52%. Now my only real reservation about Steve Cooper as a manager is the fact that he's never really been known as a pressing coach, and for me, in the modern game, with so much talent in not just the second division, but also the Premier League at the moment with managers, it needs to be kind of be a prerequisite when taking a role, especially at a club who cannot really string together high possession sort of games like Nottingham Forest. We're definitely built to be a more uh, counter-attacking side at the moment. This can definitely be best exemplified through the passes per defensive action metric, which may be wondering, what is that? I will explain it to you. It is the amount of passes being strung together by the opposition before your team attempts a tackle, an inception, a block, some form of defensive action to try and win possession back, for which Swansea, the Cooper's team last year, ranked 20th in the league, which doesn't necessarily suggest that they were a very aggressive team. It suggests that they were actually a bit more standoffish, allowing teams to come onto them and sort of defending around their 18-yard box. So to kind of summarise everything I've kind of talked about in this section, expect Forrest to be playing out from the back more times than not, with a certain degree of verticality and an attempt to try and control the game as much as they can. This isn't going to be 65-70% possession games, this is going to be trying to control the game by just holding onto the ball when necessary and playing forward at every opportunity. Part 4. Style and Substance Nottingham Forest summer recruitment was structured around playing a three at the back system for this season, with aggressive wingbacks Max Lowe and Jed Spence being recruited on loan to offer much needed width this side. Cooper, who tactically is a pretty flexible coach, has largely used a 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1 or 3-4-1-2 combination in order to start a very positive managerial spell with Nottingham Forest. The back four, including the goalkeeper, sees Bryce Samper preferred as the 11th man to help distribute from both short and long range, with the back three of Joe Worrell and Scott McKenna either side of the mercurial Tobias Figueiredo. These three are comfortable on the ball, with McKenna's left-footedness being essential for left-sided ball progression. The midfield four sees Loney's Jeff Spence and Max Lowe offer the greatest width to this team. They're incredible athletes, capable of offering lots of supportive runs in the final third, as well as good cover and defensive stability against more dominant teams. Alongside them is the resurgence of Forrest's forgotten man, Jack Colback. He is however extremely fit, with game time being hard to come by in previous seasons, and experienced enough to know when to stick or twist in midfield, and his flexibility has seen him play across the midfield and even as an auxiliary left wing back against Sheffield United due to Lowe's inability to play against his pairing club, showing Cooper's faith in the 32-year-old. 
Alongside that experienced head, you will likely see one of Ryan Yates or James Garner. Yates definitely more the defensive presence in that midfield, able to win balls in both boxes from set pieces, free kicks and crosses. James Garner, on the other hand, is definitely more of the transition man, looking to link both defence and attack together to try and create opportunities particularly against less ball dominant teams. Finally is the question of the attack. Forest have significant depth in these positions. In wide areas you'll see the likes of Alex Martin, Brennan Johnson, Loney, Philip Zinkenagel and of course Joe Lolly. And up front a combination of two strikers, Lyle Taylor and Lewis Crabben who both can combine to get goals when necessary. The width in this team is provided by the fullbacks, enabling the wide talent of this side to thrive, in particular Brennan Johnson, who's become an integral member of this team with 7 goals and assists this season from 17 games, and looking more and more comfortable in this team as the season progresses. He predominantly lines up just to the right of Lewis Crabben, with one of Zink and Argelmeiten or Lolly able to play the other side in a similar role, but perhaps slightly more deeper, helping to connect the attack and the defence together, which allows Johnson the freedom to push up right up alongside Lewis Graben. To summarise, Forrest play predominantly with a back three with two city midfielders ahead of them, providing them a spine of five players in order to cover on the counter-attack or against more ball-dominant sides. This allows the wing backs and the front three to get forward to create a front five, able to interchange, create opportunities, and more importantly, get real width out on the touchlines from the wing backs. The front three will predominantly play within the width of the 18 yard box but that doesn't mean they are static in their positioning rotating often and you'll sometimes see Johnson picking up centre four positions Lewis Graben pulling out to the left or to the right and the other midfielder dropping into the pocket to help pull the strings. Overall this is the core of an extremely strong team and despite the financial situation Forest find themselves in the recruitment from Dane Murphy has been exceptional with players like Brian Ajeda as well waiting to come in from the wings when needed. Steve Cooper has also garnered himself quite the reputation at the club as a great man manager, already a very positive influence on what became quite a toxic dressing room following the departure of Chris Hewton, adding stability to this team and a genuine smile on the face of Forest fans when we play at the city ground. And that pretty much wraps up my coverage of what's happening with Nottingham Forest at the moment and how under Steve Cooper we've really transformed into a completely different side to that of maybe even 12 months ago. The biggest show of this is that the goals are starting to come back we're starting to win a lot more on the road we aren't just winning games 1-0 or 2-1 we're actually starting to keep clean sheets and score lots of goals in the process overall it's been a long long work and it's still a long way to go for us but it's definitely showing some real promise in this team and maybe in the next couple of years something that can build towards maybe a playoff or promotion push let me know though what you think in the comments down below i'd be greatly appreciative and also if you want to see me do another one of these sort of one-on-one -on -one breakdowns of another football team i'd be really into doing that you just gotta let me know who you want to see me do in the comments down below also whilst you're down there i'd really appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing to the channel we're getting very close to 150 subscribers which is my goal for the end of this year so if you want to help me attain that i'd be highly highly appreciative and with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching hope you have a lovely day i will catch you later